everything changed when the goats arrived. Before, giant Galapagos tortoises acted as their island's gardeners, thinning overgrowth, dispersing seeds, and basically maintaining balance in the ecosystem. And that was good for everybody living there. But the delicate ecological situation of the Galapagos Islands was upset when pirates and whalers paid them a visit in the 1800s. While their stay was temporary, their stowaways, feral goats, made themselves at home permanently and brought environmental destruction with them. Conservation scientists tried to remove the threat, but their first attempt wasn't effective enough. What they needed was a bit of creativity, and what they came up with was a way to turn goat against goat. Now, these goats might not have been a problem if they were a good fit for the ecosystem, but they weren't. They were invasive to the Galapagos, meaning they weren't native to the islands. With no natural predators to keep them in check, their presence spelled trouble for the habitat. These goats were fast, hungry, and destructive to the island vegetation, much like disrespectful teenagers tearing through your kitchen cupboards and leaving a mess for you to deal with later. But unlike us, who can clean up and restock our snacks at the grocery store the next day, the Galapagos can't bounce back so fast. The goat's ravenous rampage disrupted the delicate balance of the island's ecosystem. The plants couldn't grow fast enough. And as you might guess, the tortoises weren't fast enough either. Though the gentle giants act as good stewards for the island's vegetation, they lead slow, peaceful lives. Clocking speeds of 0.2 miles per hour and sleeping two thirds of each day, there was no way that they could compete with a horde of fast and hungry goats. Their population dwindled. It's important to keep in mind that these particular giant tortoises are endemic to the Galapagos, meaning they're found nowhere else on Earth, along with many of the other species living on the islands. If their habitat disappears, they do too. And the tortoises weren't the only part of the islands affected by the goats. Overgrazing altered the balance of island vegetation, leading to significant soil erosion. Eventually, the locals said that the goats had caused enough trouble. But there was no obvious or easy solution. The problem was larger than simply shepherding a small herd onto a boat off the island. Conservationists debated introducing predators to take out the goats, but that had the potential to bring even more issues. So in 1997, Galapagos scientists and land managers launched Project Isabella, named after the islands on which it took place. The project was simple in concept. Sharpshooters flew around Isabella Island on helicopters and eliminated any goats they found. While the effort was ruthless, it was effective, at least at first. Except there was one little problem. Some goats were really good at hiding. So good, in fact, that they outsmarted the hunters until the conservationists were back to square one. It became clear that all the goats needed to go. With their ability to bounce back, it was either the sensitive Galapagos ecosystem that had to disappear, or the goats. It seems that the situation called for a more cunning solution. Introducing Judas goats. Yes, named after that Judas. About 900 goats were sterilized and given tracking devices. Then they were turned loose onto the islands. Goats are herd animals, so they band together. The Judas goats were no exception, finding new companions upon release. And just like how traitorous Judas betrayed his friend Jesus, the tracked goats led their brethren to their own demise. Scientists have been using radio trackers to track animals since the 1960s. These trackers are worn by the animals, revealing their location by transmitting signals to the researchers. Radio tracking has been very useful in conservation because we can glean a lot of good information from an animal's location, its migratory patterns, personal habitat use, and social behaviors, to name a few uses. In this case, radio tracking came in handy for hunting down these Judas goats and their friends. The shooters would follow the signal and eliminate all but the Judas goats, leaving them alive to find other goats to track down. Then the cycle would repeat, and this worked. Not even the smartest or stealthiest of goats saw it coming. The plan was so effective that Northern Isabella was declared goat free by 2006. That's a huge feat considering the goat population had reached roughly 100,000 in 1997. After this, balance began to return to the island. The vegetation grew back, and the Galapagos tortoise population grew by around 16,000 individuals across all the islands, which is a lot of big tortoises for such tiny islands. The issue of invasive and introduced species is much larger than the goats or the Galapagos. They are the second largest threat to biodiversity today, only beaten out by habitat loss. And their impact is much worse on islands, as miles and miles of water are pretty effective at isolating an ecosystem. But sometimes this problem can be solved. Some solutions are more effective than others, but with creativity and adaptability, conservationists can work to nudge our world's ecosystems back into balance.